Here we have the Apple iMac M1, 24 inch model. This is Apple's latest iMac running their latest processor and it's got all the latest technologies and pizzazz. In fact, you can get it in pretty much any color that you want. And you know, I have to say that from a marketing standpoint, the promo material doesn't do this thing justice. This is by far one of the best looking computers of all time. But today we're going to find out if it's any good. Now I have a lot to cover today, so I'm gonna to try to breeze through some of this stuff pretty fast. Suffice to say that the first thing you'll notice about this computer is that it is one of the most unique and one of the most beautiful looking computers, I think, of all time. The first thing that'll pop out to you is how minimalist it is. There's nothing really going on with it. In fact, the Apple logo, they've even taken a departure from the original uh, iMacs, but the Apple logo that used to be in the front is now only in the back. And I can only uh, uh, surmise that that's a sort of little marketing kick that if somebody's walking into your store, they're just gonna see that big Apple logo on the back, but there's nothing on the front to confuse you or remind you otherwise that you're using a very expensive but very nice Apple computer. Even the stand is now a little bit different than the old ones. They've kind of, it's got this kind of new shape and this like incredibly sophisticated looking hinge on it. And I will say that the hinge is incredibly smooth and it does have great angles. So that's about where it is max tilted this way. Not enough to write on it, but it's not a touch screen. And this is about as far down as it goes. So, you know, most people are just probably gonna be using it like this. But anyway, it's worth noting the angles at which it can approach. And then as far as IO is concerned, you have the power button right here to turn it on. Typical placement for an iMac. Then you've got four ports here. You've got two USB-Cs, 3.0s, and then two Thunderbolt USB 4.0s for that maximum USB horsepower. And then, of course, where you plug it in because it doesn't run on solar energy either. And the thing is, this kind of do-it-all plug, it is unique, and they've, they've now taken a departure from the traditional PC plug that was in all the iMacs, but uh, this one is both sort of like a one-direction-fits-all plus data port because Apple very cleverly put the Ethernet jack on the AC adapter. So that means that you can have that thing kind of like lying on the floor somewhere and then sort of uh, snake your Ethernet cord over to the AC adapter. And I think that that was a pretty clever idea rather than, I guess, like crowding it here on the back, although some people might miss it, but it kind of kept this sort of thin, beautiful aesthetic. Nevertheless, the ethernet jack is on the AC adapter for those needing that. Look at the power port. It just sort of magnetically kind of clicks and clips in there. But that's all you get for IO other than the audio, dual audio, Let's see if we can see that there. Headphone TRRRS or S jack, which will be good for headphones and microphones. But the thing is, is unlike most computers, you may not need a pair of headphones for this thing. So if you're an audiophile, you are going to be blown away by the speaker quality on this machine. I have never heard speakers this good on an all-in-one ever. And that includes the iMac Pro. The speakers on this thing are just amazing, and I cannot wait to see what they do with the 27-inch M1 iMac when that comes out. But nevertheless, this thing produces fantastic sound. And jokes aside, if you're doing audio processing or you really want high fidelity, you're probably gonna want a set of nice quality headphones. But nevertheless, these are some of the best, uh, loudest, most clearest, and beautiful speakers I've ever heard. Next up, let's talk about the display. Let's get that glare out of there. And I will turn this thing on at some point or another, but let me just kind of, let me just sort of breeze through some of this stuff. 24 inch display. It is a four and a half K retina. It is super bright, super colorful, super calibrated. It is just a super, super screen. And it's even got sort of like a nice anti-glare coating on it. You can't really tell, obviously, in, in the video here, but if you're working under direct light, it, it, it does a pretty good job at thwarting the, the brightness of the ambiance. And there is a little bit of backlight bleed in the blacks, which I found to be sort of disappointing, but it doesn't actually seem to disrupt anything, oddly enough. It's not... Uh, like it, obvious enough that it really affects what you're doing. You know, so I mean, really, if you're doing any kind of like watching videos or video processing, stuff like that, I'm really not sure it's going to get in the way. But if you're just using this computer as a daily driver, productivity, internet web, watching Netflix, this kind of thing, this display is fantastic 
fantastic. It is, it's just beautiful to look at. Uh, they did a fantastic job. Apple typically does a great job with their displays and their computers, and this one is no exception. Uh, they used to make 21 and a half inch IMAX. Uh, oh, they used to make 24 inch IMAX quite some time ago, 10 years ago, whatever it was. Uh, so this is now their foray. They're, they're going right back into the 24 inch market with this sort of like nice edge to edge to display kind of. You do have a FaceTime camera up there, and this is what the FaceTime camera quality looks like now. This is a test of Apple's 1080p FaceTime with M1 image processing webcam. As you can see, the image quality is not too bad. And of course, paired with that FaceTime camera is a beautiful microphone array that really does a great job at, at picking up sound and audio from all over the place. It's uh, very, very clear and crisp and you'll have no problem doing Zoom, Skype, or FaceTime calls on this thing. And you could probably even record maybe like a YouTube video with it if you wanted, maybe. I'm gonna compare this thing to the iMac 27 inch Pro, uh, which came out in 2017, but has largely been untouched since. Uh, they did a little update about a year ago, but nevertheless has been untouched since. And what we wanna find out really, there's a ton of benchmark stuff out there regarding the M1 processor, so I'm not gonna dive too deep into that. But what we're gonna find out is just practically speaking, if it's worth any kind of upgrade going from like, let's say an iMac Pro 27 inch to the 24 inch M1. Spoiler alert, the answer is no. I still think that you're gonna get a slightly better experience out of an iMac Pro 27 inch. But that said, considering that this thing costs 1500 bucks only four years later, whereas the iMac Pros you know, are still sitting at around the $4,000 price tag um, and kind of working their way up, you can get used ones. I frankly think that if I was in the market for a new computer, I'd probably get the M1 iMac. Uh, that said, I don't think I'm going to be selling my iMac Pro anytime soon. This thing does a great job with gaming and editing and just plowing through your everyday operations. I don't think anybody is going to be wanting for more power. But here is the benchmark on both the M1 uh, iMac and then the iMac Pro as well. These are the Geekbench scores. Now it's interesting to note that the single core score is better on the 24 inch than it is on the iMac Pro, but the multi-core is better on the iMac Pro. Now this is a test of me doing a almost six gigabyte 4K video file and we're compressing it. And as we can see, the M1 processor is actually crushing the hell out of the Intel iMac Pro. Now the Intel iMac Pro has a Xeon processor in it with 32 gigabytes of RAM. This particular iMac had eight gigs of RAM and then of course the M1 CPU and it does beat it. Now the build quality on this thing, and I am gonna turn it on here in a little bit, but the build quality on this thing, let's just get that monitor out of the way, is outstanding. Um, not that you would ever travel with this thing, but you probably could. It's incredibly lightweight, it's durable as hell, and by all accounts, this thing could probably take a beating. That said, why would you want to? Now the other thing I'd like to talk about is the keyboard and the mouse. Let's see if I can get a little bit of a close up there. And there we go. Anyway, now the new keyboard comes with the touch ID sensor, there we go, touch ID sensor built in. Now that's something that people have been asking for for a very long time and it's kind of surprising that it took Apple so long to pop it in there. I'm assuming battery life and security were concerns with those things given that it's a wireless keyboard and everything, but nevertheless they have it now and it is compatible with all M1 devices. So that means if you have like let's say the MacBook Pro 13 inch or the MacBook Air, the keyboard with Touch ID can pair to that. Now the thing is is that they do not sell this keyboard standalone yet. You can only get it with the new iMacs. Uh, that said, you do have now finally, which is awesome and I'm really glad that they released this pretty much out of the gate, is you can get a version of this keyboard off of Apple's website with the numpad on the right side as well. So for those accountants and those doing data entry, you can get a Touch ID full size keyboard for only an extra 30 bucks, which really isn't too bad in the scheme of things. Now the other thing is with the Magic Mouse. Now there really is nothing different about the Magic Mouse. You still charge it on the bottom, which is absolutely stupid. They could have put the little charger on there so you could use it while it's charging, but no, it's on the bottom, so you can't use it while it's charging. Um, but one little interesting thing is that the rails on the Magic Mouse have now changed from dark gray to a light gray. I don't think it really does anything per, for performance. It's just 
interesting and worth noting. But nevertheless, it's still the same Magic Mouse you know and hate. It will give you excruciating wrist pain after extended use. Uh, but the multi-gesture support on it is second to none. And of course, the Bluetooth compatibility with Apple devices is also second to none. It just makes for a very seamless mouse pairing experience. Uh, that said, if you are a heavy computer user, you might want something with a little more ergonomics. Wrapping that up though, the keyboard is fantastic to type on. It's super precise, it's super accurate, and it just feels good and tactile. And I think anybody using this new Magic Keyboard will have a fantastic typing experience. Let's talk about some other nifty features on the iMac M1. So again, the webcam on it, very good. It's a 1080p FaceTime camera. This does have Wi-Fi 6 and of course the latest Bluetooth low power 5 technology. The screen is wide color, P3, 500 nits, super brightness, true tone tech technology so it basically can adjust from the white balance in the room make sure that you get the most accurate color representation by the way that does work very very well but one thing that is pretty damn awesome just another little departure regarding the speaker quality in this unit is the fact that they have now added spatial audio to this thing and I think that that is pretty damn awesome and that is going to make this computer absolutely perfect for audio processors so with those four IO ports on the back the uh, USB 4s and the USB 3s you're going to be able to plug in any kind of of like switch, microphone, any kind of audio processing equipment that you would want in here. And I think this computer is really going to speak numbers to people that are working in a studio. Uh, this thing is going to crunch audio processing. It's gonna, it's gonna crush it like a pro. Um, you're gonna be able to have ton of effects, ton of data, huge amount of files. But what's so awesome is that with that spatial audio compatibility, you'll be able to sort of add that new sort of 3D audio feel to it. And even cooler is that you'll be able to listen to songs on Apple Music, which now supports spatial audio and take advantage of that really, really cool 3D effect. So this thing feature-wise is really packed to the brim and at it, basically at a thousand dollar price point, I think that the value is pretty hard to beat. And of course, if Apple ever does get into the gaming market very seriously, this thing is well equipped to perform well with games. The eight core GPU with the M1 and how it kind of handles that, uh, that gaming and graphics uh, does do exceptionally well, except let's be honest, uh, Steam is a little bit, it's still a little bit bare bones when it comes to gaming. And of course you need to tailor make the game for the M1 processor to take real advantage of it. Now there are some final things that I'd like to discuss about the iMac M1, iMac M1, and that is that the box that it comes in is nothing short of an origami puzzle. Pulling it out of there is like solving like a Rubik's cube and that's okay because eventually you'll rip it out out of there and, and be presented with this beautiful machine. That said, and I did make a video uh, about this particular issue, issue the, the computer is absolutely littered with plastic on it. And I do think that Apple should take better care at being less plastic and pollution heavy when packing this thing. You can watch my other video uh, to see how much junk really comes in this in the box of this thing. But nevertheless, I'm gonna go, I'm just gonna go ahead and breeze past that. If you wanna see how much junk comes with it, watch the other video. It was worth noting nevertheless. Um, the other thing is the uh, plug, even though it does magnetically connect, it's not really a MagSafe plug. So don't think that you can accidentally walk by, snag it with your foot and the computer is safe. No, it will rip this thing right off of the table. So just be a little bit careful. Another little notable thing that's very cute is when you turn on the computer rather than the traditional uh, Mac OS Big Sur screen. You do get a sort of custom one based on the color of the iMac you picked and it says hello in about a thousand different languages. A little bit of, of a throwback to Mac OS X as well as some of the old iMacs as well. It's kind of interesting how Apple keeps on making these homages with this particular iMac. Again, something cute worth noting. And then the next thing is regarding specs. Now you can get this particular iMac in either an eight gigabyte or 16 gigabyte RAM flavor. Now the thing is, is that most of the time when you're doing heavy video editing, you wanna get into the 32 or even 64 gig RAM spectrum. And for that matter, if you're running things like virtual machines and really taxing the hell out of the machine, you want as much RAM as possible. Well, it's not possible to upgrade the RAM on an M1 iMac. So obviously you need to get the one out of the gate that you want. In this case, most people that are doing video editing are gonna want the 16 gigabyte version. Now the thing is, is that 16 gigabyte, uh, gigabytes of RAM on an M1 processor is not the same as 16 gigabytes of RAM 
on an Intel processor. So that means that I would say like roughly you can get away with some better video editing performance on this even with 16 gigabytes of RAM than you could on like let's say an older iMac with an Intel processor that has even as much as maybe like 64 gigs of RAM. In some of those benchmarks that I showed you can see that this thing outperforms in a variety of ways. That said, is the big question is, is this a video editor's computer? And I don't think that it is entirely. While you can edit video on this, and that includes 4K, very high definition, good footage with a lot of effects and all this other stuff, while this thing is a very capable video editor, and for that matter, at a very, very great price with a very, very great screen, there are some things that video editors should note about this. One is again, it's not maybe as powerful as like, let's say a Mac Pro or maybe even a soup totally uh, decked out uh, Intel computer with the greatest processor, greatest RAM, stuff like that. This M1 processor is unbelievably capable for what it is, but still nevertheless, it's, it's, there are some oddities with performance as far as video editing is concerned. And that is really apparent when it comes to raw video files. Uh, now, the other thing to note is that the input and output on this thing, because you only have four USB-C type ports, and two of them are the USB 4 Thunderbolts, that does limit you on stuff that you can connect. Now, yes, you can get like a hub for example, that goes from one of the Thunderbolt uh, ports and you can make like traditional USB ports out of that, which is not necessarily a big deal, but it's worth noting that you may need another dongle or some kind of adapter in order to plug your equipment into it. The takeaway being that if you already have an iMac Pro or a Mac Pro or something like this, I don't think that you should be tossing that and getting one of these M1 iMacs. That said, if you are in the market for a new computer looking to do some video editing for under $2,000, this thing is almost impossible to beat. It does perform fantastic. There are just a couple of catches. Who is this computer for? Well, I think that it is probably for audio processors, people working in an audio studio. I think it's even for maybe like on the fly video editors, people that can like that are on like a video production. They want to bring these computers on location and knock out some editing on them. You can pop external storage into those USB 4 ports. I don't think that it's for gamers, even though this thing can game. I think gaming is still uh, awarded to that of the PC platform. But that said, uh, this is going to be for anybody that wants a fancy, beautiful computer sitting in their retail storefront, if they just sort of want to flex and show that they have one of the most beautiful all-in-ones ever made. It's for people that just need a general productivity computer that want to work in the Apple environment. There is a version of this computer that can be bought. It's, it's the eight core CPU, seven core GPU version of this iMac, which clocks in at about 1200 bucks or so. You can usually get a pretty good deal on them about $1,200 or so. And again, that is exceptional value for somebody needing to work in the Apple environment, even if they're only using things like Safari, email, maybe the occasional document, stuff like that. Obviously, there are, are much cheaper computers that you can get to do the same thing. But nevertheless, this sort of all-in-one computer, speakers, screen, everything just sort of built right in just makes this exceptional, exceptional value. Again, I am very excited to see what Apple will do with the iMac 27 inch version. I'm, I'm sure it might even be maybe like 29 inches now since they're getting rid of the bezels and kind of making the screens a little bit bigger, but we'll see what they do there. In any event, I do recommend the Apple iMac M1 24 inch computer. I think it's great. I think anybody that buys it is going to love it. You just sort of get immersed and get lost into using this computer with its gorgeous screen and its awesome sound capabilities and great speakers. Again, latest technology, fast Wi-Fi, great, great stuff, great machine. Two thumbs up. If you have any questions on the Apple M1 iMac 24 inch, please feel free to reach out to us in the comments section. Otherwise, we'll be back with another video real soon.